Let's spend a couple minutes learning more about Daytona's new open source project. We open sourced it last week and you can head over to GitHub to learn more, link in the description. So open source this project last week, it's brand new. It's got a couple of functions, which we think are automatically gonna help you manage your development environments. And in the next couple of weeks, we'll be making constant releases to add more and more plugins and other features to make it even better. But we think it's a great place to start managing your local environments on your laptop. So let's check that out and what that looks like. So uh, we're gonna go to a, a terminal and I'm gonna go ahead and just pull up a curl script. We'll have other ways to install it with brew and Winget and other packaging formats, but right now it's just a binary. And so this curl script, you can check it out. It's just gonna help you get the right version of the binary for your particular architecture and operating system, and then install it into user local. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Once I have it, we'll just check the version. As of today, that version is 02, 0.2. Uh, by the time you see this video, that might change, but it's easy to check. Once you have it, I'm gonna go ahead and do a Daytona server. So again, it's a single binary, everything you need, the server and the CLI is in one place. And the packaging that we'll do eventually will automatically daemonize this for you. Uh, but to start with, we wanted to get it out into your hands and get some feedback. So you're gonna go ahead and just run the server uh, independently first. Now, if you've ever used a cloud development environment like Codespaces, then you'll automatically feel pretty familiar with Daytona. What's gonna happen is you're gonna give Daytona a repo. You're gonna say, open this repo for me. Daytona will open that repo and give you an environment just for that. So whether that is a default image that you specify where, hey, whenever I do development, this is, this is what I wanna do development with, this Docker container or whatever's inside of this container. Or if you have a dev container inside of that repo, we'll use that. So dev container is a format to uh, specify what's inside the container, but also the workflow of that container. We've got lots of videos on that in the Daytona channel. Check those out. Uh, but if you have a dev container, then we, we can go ahead and use that as well. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll see a little bit of all of that. So we're gonna go Daytona create now you could just hit enter here and Daytona will go through a nice little uh, TUI to show, to ask you a bunch of questions given uh, a set of repos that it knows you have, uh, knows that you have, it can, it can prompt you. It can basically look through your GitHub repos and, and give you back the list. But I already know which one I want. So I'm gonna go create a workspace called test. I'm gonna give it dash r and that's the repo and i'm also going to skip the ide for now so by default daytona will automatically open your ide whichever one's your favorite what you specify uh, right now those are vs code either local or vs code in a browser uh, jetbrains will also be coming but let's say that you wanted to use ssh and use vi just go ahead and hit skip ide uh, you're gonna get asked for a provider. So right now, I'm gonna choose the local provider, which on this Mac just happens to be Docker Desktop. But this is one of my favorite things about Daytona, is you can choose where that provider is and you can connect providers locally and remotely. So in the, in the weeks to come, you'll see that we'll have plugins for DigitalOcean, uh, Amazon, uh, Google, lots of different places where you can run those environments and then connect them so that whether it's local on your laptop or remote on a Linux server behind me, you'll have the exact same experience. I'm gonna choose the local provider for this example. Um, that just happens to be Docker Desktop. And it's gonna go ahead and create that environment for me. And once we have that environment, we can start to check out more. But the goal here is that you should be able to, in one click or one command, get everything that you need to do development. And then when you're done with that development, 
you can toss that environment out and when it's time to go back and do the next feature or do the next bug fix or do a code review, you should be able to get a clean environment and not have to worry about, you know, did that environment drift over time? All right, so we have this up and running and now, well, we could do a lot of things. So Daytona command line is gonna work a lot like you would expect. You'd be able to list your uh, running workspaces you'll be able to do things like SSH. So you can SSH into this workspace. Uh, by default, we take care of all of that for you. You don't have to know anything about this. And I think there's a really interesting blog post that describes what's happening here. There's a lot of different steps. We set up a wire guard for you so that, that the uh, ports can get proxied back. We take care of all the SSH keys, everything's done. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into this and it should be easy for you. It's a lot of work for us, and but we think that's what is gonna be super valuable. Um, so if you wanted to, you could just hop into a, into a VI session and just get to work. Um, that's not how I'm gonna uh, work uh, for this example. I wanna use VS Code, so I'm gonna go ahead and do Daytona, and I'm gonna run code, and it's gonna open the simple Astro example for me. Now, uh, it's using VS Code and it's using the remote extensions inside VS Code. So we're gonna use the SSH extension. We're also gonna use the dev container extension natively, which is a big difference between uh, Daytona and a lot of other solutions in this space. They're not able to use the native VS Code extensions and we are. And so you'll have an experience that you know, projects that work in code spaces will work just fine in Daytona because we're using the exact same mechanism underneath to run those environments. So uh, it's gonna prompt me, it's gonna notice that I'm running a dev container, it's gonna prompt me if I wanna reopen it, but you can do it beforehand. Just go ahead and hit, um, in, on a Mac, Command Shift P or Control Shift P on a, on a Windows box, and dev container, rebuild and reopen in container and it's gonna go ahead and launch that for me. We can watch this sort of scroll by. All that's happening here is it's using the dev container format that I've got in this project to go grab a node type script container for me and then run some scripts. It's gonna run uh, pnpm install. It's gonna go basically go grab my dependencies. And uh, once that's done, it's gonna give it back to me and I'm gonna have everything I need to develop. And then when I'm done, I can just toss it. And I think that's a fantastic example where uh, not only could I develop this, but if I had a different project with a completely different Python stack, Java stack, Go stack, whatever, I could go grab another environment up and running. So here we are. Uh, I've automatically opened a preview window and I've got this Astro example up and running. And so that's all it took to go from nothing to Daytona running an environment for me. So go check it out on the GitHub repo and ask questions. Join the community, join our Slack, uh, file issues. If you run into something where it doesn't work how you thought it would, file an issue. We, th we hope that what you find is that Daytona is a very intuitive, uh, pleasurable experience, and we'd love to hear where that doesn't work out. So uh, early project, we're super excited about the amount of community interaction we've had so far, and we're looking forward to more this week. So thank you very much, and we'll see you in Slack.